In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the cumulative density function for the normal bell-shaped curve. And I'm using uh, TI-84 Plus software, but this is also uh, something that's very relevant to you who have TI-83s. And perhaps later models like the T-Inspire or other models like Casio. However, you're going to have to use, if you have a different calculator, you're going to have to kind of figure out what the slight variations or differences are. So, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to second key, and then right above the VARS key is distribution. I'm going to go to normal CDF because the cumulative density function I'm working with is a normal bell-shaped curve. Hit enter. Now the nice thing about the TI-84 Plus is it has a nice helper menu. The TI-83 doesn't, but I'm going to show you how to do this on a TI-83. Now the problem that I'm looking at is a distribution of SAT math scores. What I'm interested in is I want to know what percentage overall of students who took the SAT math scored 600 or better. 600 or better. So that means that the lower value, the lower z-score I'm looking at here is 600. Now since a normal bell-shaped curve is defined on the whole real line from negative infinity to positive infinity, I'm going to make my upper value ridiculously large. The mean of my distribution is a score of 515. The problem that I was given, given didn't give me the standard deviation, but it gave me the variance, which is the square of the standard deviation. So I'm going to take the square root of the variance that they gave me which was 26,912. Okay, well, for the TI-84, all I have to do now is hit paste. Now, before I hit calculation, or actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Now, look at the value I get, which is 0 0.3021. That means that approximately 30.22% of students who took the SAT math in 2008 did 600 or better on that portion of the test. Now if you're using a TI-83, the way that it will work is you'll still go to second distribution and you'll go to normal CDF, but what will happen is you won't get that nice prompt menu. You'll get normal CDF in a parenthesis. First you type in your Z lower, comma, your Z upper, comma, your mean, and then comma, your standard deviation. If you don't know the standard deviation, but if you know the variance, you can just take the square root of that and it will perform the calculation. All right, that's how you use normal CDF on the TI-84 calculator. God bless you, wherever you are today.